My name is Pat Lynn, and 13 years ago in the summer of 2009, I broke my neck in a diving accident. So I left my house in Tacoma uh, late June 2009 to head out on a missions trip to the Dominican Republic. And um, I had no idea that it would be my last time actually leaving that house. And I remember diving in like it was yesterday. I remember hitting a boulder. I tried to move my hands and I, I couldn't move them. I tried to move my feet and I couldn't move them. I was face down in the water and I was totally paralyzed. And I remember hearing the Holy Spirit speak to me that the Lord was going to heal me. And so when I got to the hospital, they didn't know what to do with me because it was too big to fit in their MRI machine. And um, the x-rays that they took, you know, showed that my neck was severely broken. My first several days in the hospital were terrifying because I had to work for every single breath. Every single breath was, and then an exhale. And then I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up in the middle of the night panicked because I'd stopped breathing. And I was there for a week before I got back to the United States. The doctor said, uh, the good news is uh, that we can do surgery on you and, and and the bad news is that you're never going to use your hands you're never going to walk again you won't have your own children um, you're not going to go drive you you need to you know be used to the idea that you're going to spend the rest of your life in a in a chair i remember when they told me that like i just sank and i had to go back to jesus words that he was you know, going to provide for me and going to heal me. And, and it, here's the thing, when I heard him say he was gonna heal me, I thought in two or three days, I'd be out running around and playing hoops again. And turns out that my healing is totally completely different than what, what I pictured. My left hand, it was the first, first thing to move on my body. And I remember um, just being able to barely pick it up, you know, just barely. I'd be sitting in a chair and just barely be able to move it just like that. And, um, and then, then it was quite some time before my right hand moved. But the, the crazy thing is that as I de did PT uh, every day, it went from barely moving anything to moving things quickly. Like within a couple of weeks, I could touch my chin, all right, and pick up my hand to do that. And then I, I remember the day that I could get my hand all the way on top of my head for the first time. It took me over a year before I could um, stand up by myself. The day that I left the hospital, I walked out of my room to the elevator and I sat in my my walker down the elevator and then I walked out of the hospital. I get to be a dad. I I get to, right? I I get to wake up and play with my kids and teach them about the Lord. And my kids help me. They go get my crutches when I drop them. They, <laughs> they, we, we go meet other dads. My, my daughter, she'll run up to somebody and say, this is my daddy, he broke his neck. You know, and like, she's proud of it. And the fact that I'm out walking and doing these things. It's a miracle that I can get on, on and off the floor, right? The fact that I can get down there at all and, and, and do anything out of my own physical ability to do that's incredible. But if I can get on the floor and wrestle with them and participate in what they're doing, like it's amazing. There's like a, a closeness to it, right? There's a there's a there's a humanness that all of us need, um, you know, some connection and my kids give me an amazing connection. And so like my story, it didn't turn out to be what I wanted to be, but could I say it's not miraculous that I'm using my hands or and and walking? Uh, even with crutches or a walker or at all, that I drive a car, that I get to participate in, in life after I really should have been dead, I'd say that's miraculous. A miracle doesn't have to look like what you want it to look like. A miracle is anything that God does that's for your benefit. Come on.
You know, scripture teaches us that there is power in a testimony. In fact, in Revelation 12, it reminds us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, meaning Jesus, and the word of our testimony. We're in a series right now at Life Center called Healer, where we're talking about the fact that Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what that means is Jesus is still healing. He's still bringing freedom. He's still bringing hope in the midst of hopeless situations. And today I'm excited to welcome my good friend, Pat Lynn. Life Center, would you stand to your feet? Would you welcome Pat as he comes and joins us this morning? Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So glad you can be seated. Um, Man, it's good to have you here, Pat. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. Um, you, you've got some, uh, some history in this place. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, um, I started here when Garrett was in fifth grade. Uh, so I came here as a, a youth worker in 2003-ish, 2002-2003, and then I uh, worked with youth ministry until 2005, and then I went across the parking lot and taught at the school for a decade. Uh, I broke my neck in 2009, and I remember two years later when Ross called me, I was in bed, and he said, hey, do you want to come back to work? And I was like, yes, please, and um, came back here. And then uh, in 2015, uh, the Lord just made it clear to me that it was time for a new season. And, uh, but I have to tell you, this, I've told you this several times, this place is home to me. I still call it home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amen. You, you make this statement at the conclusion of that video. And you, you define a miracle, I think, in a really helpful way. Mm. You say this, uh, a miracle is anything that God does for our benefit. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I get to do this really cool thing with my life. And I, um, <laughs> Winston Churchill had this famous saying, he said, uh, you know, if you're going through hell, keep on going. Someone turned it into a country song a few years ago. Was, all right. Was, you know, I wouldn't know anything about that. You wouldn't? No. All right. No. Well, I, I got camel on, so um, he did. And uh, anyway, like, people come up to me when I share, and I, I get to share at churches and schools and things, and people come to me when I share, and they say, hey, I've never been through anything like what you've been through, but here's what I'm going through. And what I say is, if, if you're going through a trial right now, and it's a big deal to you, it's a big deal. Yeah. Right? Because we, we, we aren't in control of what happens to us or what we have to go through. How, what we're in control of is how we act during that time and how we respond to what we're going through. That's good. Right? And so do we respond in faith? Is that what we're doing? Right? And are we, are we moving forward in, in what God's asking you to do? And if you're doing that, good things are going to happen because uh, God's got your back. Yeah. And he just does. That's right. <laughs> but you have such an incredible story and I can't wait to dive into a little bit more of it. And as we were talking, kind of preparing for this weekend, uh, we both felt like, man, Mark chapter five yeah. is, is something that we want to look to. And so if you have your Bibles, would you join us? Mark chapter five, the team's going to put it up on the screen as well. But in this passage, we see Jesus interact with two different individuals who need healing. And, you know, we know this, that there's people gathered here today. There's some who are watching online and there's different places where people need healing. There's yes. some who need healing physically. There's some who need healing emotionally, mentally. And yes. we see these dynamics at work yes. right here in Mark chapter five. Look with me to verse 21. It says this, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the sea. One of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, my little daughter is dying. Come and lay your hands on her so that she can get well and live. I love this. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd was following and pressing against him. I love that Jesus was willing to go on the journey. Yeah, and notice that it doesn't say that Jesus told him, I'm going with you. It doesn't say, I, you know, you heard the, the voice of the Lord or there was a conversation. It just says that Jesus went with him and that he's always with us. Regardless of what we go through, he is. And what does the word say? It says that God is working all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. 
Yeah. So just like I said, if you're in the middle of it and you don't know what's going on, you have to know that he knows what's on the other side. Yeah. He sees what's behind it. He knows what's going on on the back doors. And at some point, you're going to sit there and say, wow, Lord, I can see what you were doing, and that's amazing. Yeah. That, that scripture you just referenced, I believe it's Romans 8, 28, God works all things. Do you really mean all things? Everything. 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 And is, isn't that interesting how sometimes in the midst of our journey, we're like, okay, God, I see how you can work this for good, but, but this, yeah. I, I don't see any possible benefit, any good that can come out of this. And yet, as a follower of Jesus, we know, no, 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 all things. Yes. God can work all things together. And yes. Jairus here is, is about to figure that out. Jesus is going on this journey with Jairus right. to go visit his daughter, but then the unexpected happened. Uh, look at verse 25. Now, a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under many doctors. She had spent everything she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. Having heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothing, for she said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be made well. Instantly, her flow of blood ceased, and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. At once, Jesus recognized in himself that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing against you, and yet you say, who touched me? But he was looking around to see who had done this. The woman, with fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Verse 34, daughter, Jesus said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and, and be healed from your affliction. Now there's multiple things going on in, in her life, right? Because yeah. it's not just this physical issue, no. but that physical issue had some yep. other things attached Can I to it. Can unpack that for you? Please. So we, we, know, we know that this woman, if she has an issue of bleeding, right? She's, she's in, a, in a Hebrew, in a Jewish society, she's unclean and not allowed at family traditions, not allowed at the Sabbath, not allowed to be around her relatives. She's literally cast out. And check this out, because there's lots of different people of all kinds of walks of life in this room. You're, Jairus, J uh, Jar, help me with this. Yeah, Jairus. Yeah. Thank you, Jairus. Uh, you know, everybody needs help sometimes. <laughs> he's, he's a... He is a ruler of the synagogue, right? So he's a religious leader in that community and he's looked on well by everybody and popular and everyone looks up to him. And on the other end, you have a woman who's an outcast. Yeah. And Jesus goes by and he heals both of them and he does it in different ways. Yeah. We love to put God in a box and say, hey, if you're gonna do a miracle, it has to look like this for me. But the truth is, like I said, anything that he does for your benefit is really miraculous yeah. because he doesn't have to do anything for us. So he does it because he loves us. Yeah, that's right. That's right, absolutely. You, you look at this moment. So we, we hear this story about Jesus going on this journey with Jairus. Jairus is at a point of desperation, falling at the feet of Jesus, come heal my daughter. Jesus goes, but then his own miracle, it seems like it's getting interrupted. Yes. By somebody else getting their miracle. Yeah, in the middle of his miracle, somebody else wants one. Can you believe that? <laughs> and. We, sometimes we, we breeze past that, like, oh, yeah. cool. I'm sure Jairus is sitting here going. Right. Yeah, Jesus, she's dying. Yeah, come on. Yep. Like, the, the situation hasn't changed. The circumstance, Jesus, you're, you're taking time to ask right. who touched you? Right. There's more important things. There's more pressing matters. And, and to that point, verse 35, while Jesus was still speaking, people came from the synagogue leader's house and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? When Jesus overheard what was said, he told the synagogue leader, don't be afraid, only believe. Yeah. Back to back, you have two sets of voices. You have voices that definitely are probably stirring doubt yeah. in Jairus at this moment. Yeah. So you have the voices of doubt, but thankfully you also have the voice of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, God, God calls us to walk by faith, right? Not by what we can see. Yeah. If, if I stop walking when I'm, well, when I, if I never started walking again, I'll say that, then I, I miss out on a whole bunch of stuff in life that God has in front for me. Yeah. 
right? You don't see pictures of me wrestling with my kids on a video. You don't see my sweet little girl holding a flower and my, my wife. You don't see those things. Yeah. Because w when we quit in the middle of it, what's left for him, yeah. right? You have to keep walking forward, and that is by faith, and that's what he asked him to do there. Yeah, and it continues on. So Jesus says to Jairus, Jira, don't, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone accompany him except Peter, James, and John, James' brother. They came to the leader's house and he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at Jesus, but he put them all outside. By the way, that's a whole nother message right there. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta put the wrong yeah. voices outside. <laughs> put them all outside. He took the child's father, mother, and those who were with him and entered the place where the child was. Yeah. He then took the child by the hand and said to her, Talithia kum, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years old, and at this, they were utterly astounded. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The, the healing, though, it involved a journey. Yep. It looked probably a little bit different than what Jairus was expecting. Yep. Maybe a little bit different than even the woman suffering from the issue of blood, spent 12 years, all of her money, 12 years as a social outcast because she was ceremonially unclean. Yep. But the journey. Yeah. You've let been me, walking through a journey. Let me, um, let me go back for a second just yeah. to those voices. Yeah. I remember uh, when I was in the hospital and my legs had just started moving. I just started flexing the muscles in my legs and it wasn't to standing yet. And people were like, hey, you're, you're flexing muscles that you need to use in order to be able to stand up and walk. There's a, it looks like you might be able to walk at some point in time. And I love nurses and doctors and anyone who works in that medical field. I'd just love to say thank you. But I remember when a nurse walked in my room, and she said, I hear they're telling you you're gonna walk again. And, and I go, yeah, and she goes, not gonna happen. <laughs> and you said, Thanks for the gift of encouragement. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And here's the thing. Nurses work 12-hour shifts. So, like, I know I've got 12 more hours, right? And she's going to see me every one or two. I'm like, this is going to be really awesome, you know? And so uh, she comes back in my room, uh, you know, an hour or two later, and she says to me, you know, church has I heard you're a pastor. And I said, yeah. And she goes, don't ever talk to me about that. I said, okay. All right. The next time she comes back in my room, she says, Church has hurt people all through history. I said, that's correct. Yeah, church has hurt people all through history. And she looked at me like. And then she came back a little while later and she said, the idea that some all-knowing God created everything is just stupid. And I said, well, what do you believe? And you notice that she's talking to me about faith and she asked me not to talk to her about <laughs> faith, right? And so I said, what do you believe? You believe in the Big Bang? And without like hashing at all, I said, just essentially you believe that there was absolutely nothing, and out of nothing, stuff happened, which sounds a lot like Genesis chapter one, by the way. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and, and that you and I are like here in this room, and we're having this conversation totally on accident. And she goes, we're gonna talk about this later. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And um, I started the process of learning to walk, and I remember her, you know, we talked every day because she's my nurse now, and you know what we talked about every day? Faith. And you know what happened? It turned out that she had a history of a lot of hurt in the church, which hurt people hurt people. We're an imperfect thing right. that God has put here. All of us need to be working for our, for our healing through the Holy Spirit and with each other. And that's why he calls us to community because that's how we heal, yep. right? And, and she had been hurt. And so I said, hey, I'll make you a deal. If I walk out of the hospital, you have to go back to church. And she goes, yeah, go for it. And, uh, <laughs> and so that's why in my video, it says that I walked to the elevator, sat down in my walker down the thing, and then walked out of the building. And uh, I called her, I was like, hey, I did my part. And she's like, I'll go back to church. There you go. Come I don't on, know where she's on. at, but yeah. Yeah. come on. I love that. Yeah. One of the things in, in your video that you shared was, you know, you're, you're sitting there, you feel this prompt from the Holy Spirit, like, hey, I've got you, I'm gonna bring healing. And in your mind, you said, okay, that means two days I'm gonna be playing basketball. Yeah. But it didn't happen like that. Yeah. So talk to us about that journey with Jesus, 
when you're longing for healing, you're longing for change, but it looks different than yep. what you expected. Yeah. Well, I guess there's a couple things here. And the first one is this, that, that God wants the change that takes the longest and produces the most fruit. And so the healing that we really need in our life is to dig into the things that have really hurt us and we're not willing to deal with, mm. right? Whether that's a divorce or a, a cancer or an argument that you had at some point in time with somebody and you haven't talked to them in years or something you don't like about yourself that you beat yourself up over constantly and God's like, hey, you need to let that go. And we need to let those go. And when we let those go and it starts to produce fruit, real change happens. Real change can happen in an instant when God comes and does something for you. But the crazy cool thing about a journey is that when we go through a journey, people get to see it with us. Yeah. They get to do it with us. I, I was in the hospital for 120 days. And you know what? I remember maybe five days that somebody from Life Center, Life Christian, didn't come say hi to me. Wow. It made such a big difference in my journey. And that's why God calls us to be a part of a community because healing happens in community. Yeah. And so when someone is struggling, you, you go and you give them an encouraging word. You stop by, you do something really small and maybe that really small thing for them is a big miracle that they actually needed. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's not by accident, it's because the Holy Spirit prompted you to go do something, yeah. right? It's God working on your behalf for you. Yeah. And so uh, that's what a journey looks like. And I remember being totally paralyzed in my hospital bed one day and thinking this, like, Lord, if you weren't gonna heal me and I wasn't gonna get to go out and do these things, why didn't you just let me die in the river? And I was angry. And I remember the Holy Spirit speaking to me and the Lord just said, I never loved you for what you could do, I loved you because you're my son. Mm. And when we Remember that we're not just people down here living separate lives, that we're a child of the king. Yeah. That changes everything. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. Somebody needs to hear that today. Um, you are so loved by your heavenly father. Yes. Uh, regardless of where you're at in the middle of the journey, he's with you. Yes. He's for you. Um, he's not given up on you. No. And so don't give up on him. Yes. Because he will prove himself hmm. faithful time and time and time again. Um, Can I tap one yeah, crazy thing please. onto that? I've known my entire life, and I'm not saying that God made my accident happen on purpose. I made a decision and dove into a river. But my entire life I've been an evangelist. I've known it, and I've had all kinds of different jobs. And you know what I'm doing right now? I'm traveling, sharing what God has done in my life on that journey because God made each and every one of us on purpose and for a purpose and you just have to keep going to find out what it is. Yeah, yeah, keep going. You, the other day we were chatting and you shared that even though you, you had this, this sense like, man, I know that God's gonna heal me, even though there was like that faith, there were still some dark moments. Yeah. What do we do with the dark moments in the journey? Yeah. What do we do about the dark moments? Yeah, you, you keep going. You keep walking. You find fellowship. You pray, right? I remember one year as a teacher here at Life Christian, hardest year of my life, I was broken into at my house three times. My car was broken into twice, right? My dad died of cancer that year. Turns out I broke my neck. I didn't know that yet, but it was still a hard year even before that happened, right? And I'm having to come to work every day and teach the Bible. And I'm like, how do you do that? God, I'm angry and frustrated and upset. And every day I've got six periods with 30 kids in there. I'm supposed to be talking to them about the Bible and how everything's joy. And I'll just give you like some truth right here. Yeah. My body hurts all the time. It still does. I wake up in the morning, it hurts. It hurts at night. But I'm, I'm walking that journey because I have kids and I want to see what they're doing and I want to see what God has on the other side. And I remember that year, I came to work every morning at 6 a.m. I would be in my classroom, I'd lock the door and turn the lights off and get down on the floor and read the word of God and let it just wash over me. Mm. Changed every day. Yeah, yeah. Are you connecting with him? Are you making the effort to be like, hey Lord, here I am and I wanna hear from you. Mm. I wanna dig, is he growing you in that way? Because that's how we do it. Psalm 23 says that he prepares a table for us in the presence of our right, enemies. Right. Who's gonna eat when someone's trying to kill you? 
right? But that's what it says, yeah. that God is literally in the midst of that, preparing good things for you, and he's got your back while they're standing around watching. Yeah, there, They could be cancer, they could be heartache, they could be all kinds of different things, and God still has healing for that in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. Two types of voices. You, you had your nurse who came in, no, that's not gonna happen. When, those voices of doubt seems like sometimes they're external, sometimes they're internal. How did you continue to elevate the voice of Jesus in your life? Yeah, you have to proclaim it. Yeah. You have to proclaim it all the time. You have to say, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying this in the name of Jesus. I'm praying against the enemy in the name of Jesus. I used to visualize my limbs moving and say, in the name of Jesus, I see my limbs moving. I see the cells, the muscle fibers moving. I see that happening. I see God making a way. You have to, I'm not saying that you can force any of that to happen, but you have to believe that God can work on your behalf and that he is because we walk by faith. Yeah, amen, amen. Yes. And that's huge. We walk by faith, not by sight. Yes. In this, in this entire series, as we look at Jesus being this healer, and he heals our bodies, he heals our souls, he, he can heal our minds, he can heal our emotions. I know in this room, Yeah. You've seen some miracles yeah. over the years. Yeah. Share about that. Yeah. Um, my dad was an atheist uh, most of his life. And I remember when I told him I want to be a pastor, he said, why do you want to be a poor excuse for a car salesman? <laughs> <laughs> it hurt. I was like, wow, dad, that's pretty harsh. <sighs> his whole life, and I've... I started working at the church, turned down jobs and started working at the church and he was totally upset. And then over the years I prayed for him and I remember one Sunday he came to church and he sat right over here, I think the fifth row back in that section over there. And the pastor was talking about a chase list and that's people that you are praying for that they have an encounter with God. And I remember I went and I sat behind my dad and I whispered in his ear, I said, dad, you've been on my chase list for 10 years. I have to know what you believe about Jesus. And he says, I believe he's God. And I said, have you ever prayed about it? And he goes, no. And right over there, I got to lead my 65-year-old father Come to on. Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. My dad died of cancer. This room was full of business people because my dad was a businessman. And I told his story about the greatest decision he ever made, which happened right over there. And I took him to the spot. And then right here, 30 people at my dad's memorial service said yes to Jesus for the first time. Amen. Amen. That was a miracle. Amen. Amen. If you're married, you're going to appreciate this one for sure. I went to Bible college. I think I was good looking. I'm not sure. Like... <laughs> I was tall and athletic, all these kind of things, but then I break my neck and I already have a walker and one day I walked into the upper school office over there, what used to be the upper school office at Life Christian, and, and I see for the first time my wife and the Lord said, hey, there's your wife, and I said, thank you. <laughs> yeah, like, thank you, that sounds like a good decision to me. And then, you know what, like, two years later, we got married right here and I stood at my wedding when they told me I'd never stand. Come on. Miracles happen every day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, miracle after miracle, you, you're able to walk, you're able to stand, you're able to use your hands. You've been married, now you have how many kids? Three. Three, and what are their ages? Five, three, and one. Come on. Yeah. And what man said couldn't happen. Yeah, God said different. God said different. Amen. And I think about how many people here today where either their own mind, their own heart says, there's no way, things are too far gone, there's no way my marriage could ever be healed, there's no way I can ever get set free from this addiction, there's no way my body can ever recover what yeah. I'm journeying through, there's no way this anxiety will ever leave yeah. me, there's no way like, the, the battle in my mind is ever gonna change. But even though those voices may be loud and may be real, God has something else to say. Yes. God has something else yes. to say. And so today, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pray. Yes. Because we believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And maybe you're in the middle of a battle. Maybe you're in the middle of a journey. Today, in a moment, I'm gonna invite us to, to stand across this room and I'm gonna ask Pat to lead us in prayer. And more than just staying where you're at, uh, in, in just a moment, the team's gonna begin to lead us 
in a song of worship and we're just gonna open up these altar areas and we're gonna pray for people and we're gonna believe that God is going to do what only he can do. That God is going to restore some things today. Yes. Some of you, you need your joy restored. Can I tell you, Jesus can heal that lack yes. of joy in your life. Some of you, you need peace to return to your mind. Can I tell you, Jesus knows how to bring peace because he is the Prince of Peace. Mm. Uh, we know that scripture declares by his stripes, we are healed. Jesus yes. is our healer. So last week, this week, we're praying for people to experience healing in their bodies, healing in their marriages, healing from addiction. We're, we're gonna believe for it today. Yes. And that's what it is to walk by faith, continue to believe even in the midst of the journey. Because yep. here's what I know, there, there's some people here today and you said, Tyler, Pat, I've already prayed about it, nothing's changed. I've already walked forward, nothing's changed. In fact, I've prayed for years, nothing's changed. I'm not gonna do it again. I'm not gonna do it again. But there's something about the journey. Yes. You're a testimony of that. Like if you would have given up in the hospital, all of those miracles, yes. the, the way that God has revealed himself, and yes, it, it looks different, but again, a miracle is anything that God does. Amen for our benefit. Yeah. And so church, can I invite you to stand to your feet all across this room and as you do, I'm gonna welcome our pastors and prayer team to join me both down on the right and down on the left. And today, maybe there's a need in your life. In a moment, the worship team is gonna begin to play. And as you feel led, here's what I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask you to take a step of faith. We're gonna pray, we're gonna believe for God to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we can even ask or imagine. More than just rushing out to the next thing, listen, we got plenty of time. We built in time to pray in the gathering. So I know some of you are worried. We still got time in this gathering. But more than rushing on to the next thing, here's what I know. God can do more in a moment than we can in an entire lifetime of our own effort. And so today, if there's a need in your life, can I invite you just to raise a hand across this room? And I'm gonna ask Pat, to pray over us. And then as the worship team begins to play, I would love for you to step out from where you are. We're gonna take time to pray over needs as we go into this time of worship. Pat, would you lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, raise your hands with me, everyone. Heavenly Father, we love you. Yes. We lift you up, we declare your name in this place. We declare that you sit on the throne. Yes. We declare that you are king over all. We declare that you love each and every one of us and that you made us on purpose and for a purpose. Heavenly Father, we invite you into this place. Not that you're not already here, your Holy Spirit's not here, it is, and it's working, but God, I pray that you would begin to heal already yes, as people are standing, as they're walking, as they're coming up front to be prayed for, God, that you'd begin that healing in them. God, that you'd give us the, the, the strength to let go and say, I'm not strong enough. Yes. That you'd give us the, the humility to, to find joy in coming forward and saying, Lord, I'm, here's all my faults. Here's everything I'm struggling with. That you would come against the enemy who'd say, you're the only one who's dealing with that problem. Mm -hmm. It would say, no way. We don't need to be isolated. We don't need to be by ourselves. We're a child, a, a daughter, a son of the king, and he has good things for me. Yes. And we'd walk forward and just be covered in your grace. Yes. Father, we pray these things right now as people come and we lift you up in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Amen.